relief for most parents. Not for those who didn't get into the school of their choice, though. When it's a faith school, there's often that extra hurdle. Do you belong to the right faith? Just how religious are you? This week, Accord, a wide coalition of religious and non-religious groups, said no taxpayer-funded faith school should discriminate on religious grounds in either admission procedures or staff recruitment. We'll talk about that in just a moment. First, though, a visit to one faith school that's already thrown its doors open to all. St Mary's Church of England School in Hampton in Surrey is a new primary school. I want you to think. It opened last year with 30 pupils and this week admitted 30 more. The school has an open admissions policy. So while its ethos is rooted in traditional Christian values, it admits children of all faiths and none. We do not reserve a percentage of places for any church going children. We operate on a geographical locality. We opted for that policy because it was a direct response for the need for school places at this part of the borough and specifically in this part of the parish. The school balances its Christian faith with a religious teaching that's diverse. Our religious education policy is broad and it is geared to give the children the knowledge and skills of other religions world faiths and of other elements of spirituality so that children will be equipped to make choices for themselves as they grow up. We thank you for your care. At St Mary's there's a collective act of worship every morning. Parents can choose for their children to opt out if they wish. However, no parent has yet chosen to do so. Peace be with you. I wanted uh, my, my children to know that there is a God, but also understand that there are other religions and not just their own. So during the daily prayers that are taking place, Maria is included. But what I've asked her to do, when every time um, God is mentioned and how kind he's been and what he's bestowed us with, that she's to sort of visualise that as her God also. So it would, in our case, be Allah. This diversity is welcomed by Christian parents too. We're attracted by the uh, open inclusion policy um, because to us it reflected the Christian ethos of the school, the fact that it was open to all regardless of faith. And to us it meant that uh, our daughter would see people from the local community, not just people who went to the local church. Head teacher Catherine Davis feels faith schools don't have to be exclusive and can broaden people's attitudes. It's a well-run faith school that's really, really clear about its own distinctiveness within the context of the broader issues can be an extremely successful, open-minded place which allows children's own thinking and spirituality to grow and develop in whatever direction it takes. Yeah. St Mary's School in Hampton in Surrey there. What about other faith schools? Are they so open in their admissions? Joining us now, Andrew Copson, the Chief Executive of the British Humanist Association. Welcome. And also Marie Fahi from Catholic Voices, who's a teacher in a Catholic school. Welcome to you too. Thank you. And thanks very much for joining us. Um, to you first, really, are faith schools divisive? Absolutely not. Um, obviously, I work in a faith school. And I think the school like the one we've just heard of is a fantastic idea. But Catholic education works. That's the reason why the schools are so oversubscribed. Um, they're not divisive because we teach Christian values, which are things like tolerance, things like justice, things like accepting people. That's what Jesus did. That's what Catholics do. So you'd accept Muslims, you'd accept anyone of any faith in a Catholic school, would you? Or, or people some without Catholic, faith? Yeah, some Catholic schools do. I think the main thing we have to look at is parental choice. So if I'm a Catholic and I would like to send my child to a Catholic school, then I should have that choice. If there is another parent who is of a different world faith and they want to send theirs to a Muslim school or a Sikh school, brilliant. If there are other schools that have a diverse mix, I think there's room for all of them. What we have got within the Catholic system are really well-doing schools, and if we were to get rid of them, that would be crazy. OK. Catholics are taxpayers. Shouldn't they have schools which are funded by the taxpayer? All people, are, all people who are parents are taxpayers, obviously, and they should all have schools. But if we start saying that everyone should have a school that is distinctive to pass on their particular parental belief to their child, then we'll soon have as many schools as there are parents and children. I don't think that's sustainable. 
the, the question about whether or not faith schools are divisive, I think they're by their definition divisive. I mean, in spite of the, the sort of puff piece for faith schools just now, why was, that a, one. Now, hang on. Now, well, why was that a puff piece when it is a school in Hampton which is, which is opening fine. its doors It was a puff piece because it was untypical. What is distinctive, in fact, about faith schools in law is that they can select their pupils on the grounds of parental religion, that they can teach a more narrow and religion-specific curriculum um, than other schools. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean there aren't examples, individual examples of faith schools in the system that don't do that. But what's distinctive about them, as opposed to other sorts of school, is that the law does allow them to do that. And I think that when you have a mechanism of selection within the state system that separates children out according to their parental religion, which has ethnic segregatory effects, which has socioeconomically segregatory effects, that is divisive. Toby, it is divisive because it is, it is selecting in a way that you wouldn't for catchment area, for example, or any other selection procedure. Well, um, nearly every selection mechanism and all schools that are oversubscribed have to select their pupils are divisive in one way or another. If it's catchment area, then it's going to be people who can afford to live within the catchment area of the school, which typically will discriminate against those on low incomes. So, of course, schools are going to have to select and, of course, they're going to have to discriminate. The argument is, the question is, is it legitimate to, to select on these grounds? And I think it is for the reasons you said. I think that parents have a right within reason to educate their children according to their own values. That's a right enshrined in Protocol 1, Article 2 of the Human Rights Convention. Uh, and that means um, uh, allowing faith schools to coexist alongside secular schools so people who have a particular faith can bring up their children and educate their children in that faith. To make all schools secular, as I think Andrew would like to do, uh, would be to say to people of faith, you can only send your children to secular schools, uh, which is as illiberal as saying to right. people, and, no, and, who are secular, and, that they can only send their children a third, to we should, we should point out that, that in England, a third of the schools are faith-based yeah. and yes. the rest are yeah. secular. I just think and it's less extraordinary that in the, the 21st century, no. we're still using the word education and faith in the same sentence, and I don't think we should. The only reason we are, the only reason we're, we find it an issue in this country is because, historically, faith schools appear to be getting it right. They're doing something that a lot of our schools aren't doing. I would contend that it's nothing to do with the faith. It's to do with their slightly old-fashioned values. They've got really good old-fashioned educational values. I sent all of my four children to a faith school, but not because of the faith. I, I sent them there because of the quality of the education. Mm. So you don't, so you're not a believer, but they still went to yeah. a school where yeah. they, hang on a sec, where, where they, where they taught. Yeah, a they, particular they set of religious uh, values. Uh, yes. Did, did you although, not think that was a little hypocritical? Yeah, yeah it probably is. <laughs> yeah, but I, that's what I'm saying. Is, is that that's what we should be looking at really? Is that faith schools have got it right? They're getting it right. Absolutely. Okay. We know why. So that, we should, but I don't. But I would do contend that it's that nothing is. to do with the no, faith. No, it isn't. It's, it isn't. I mean, all the academic evidence shows that the reason why faith schools have higher exam results and academic achievement is because religious selection leads to socio-economic selection. I mean, all of the evidence shows that. And right. that's why they but, get high results. Andrew, there are plenty of uh, state schools, religious, faith state mm. schools, mm. Uh, which don't discriminate on social grounds and still get well above average Absolutely. results. Absolutely, but if you Marlon adjust... School, no, instance, but that's just, just, just one okay. example. If you look at the data overall and you try and adjust it, for example, to look at the catchment area of those schools, you see that again and again and again, religious selection right, leads to Right, so it turns into an selection. economic argument. All right, yes, okay. absolutely. We've talked mainly about Christian faith here. I want to uh, bring in somebody who will talk about Muslim schools. Joining us from our Birmingham studio, Rafiq Patel from the Association of Muslim Schools. Welcome to the programme. In actual fact, there are very few state-funded Muslim schools in England, aren't there? There are only about 18. So, who, who funds the rest of them? Well, uh, a number are independent schools, but I'd like to say uh, one of the issues here is that uh, uh, these state schools have been in our system for a very long time. In fact, faith-based schools have been part of the infrastructure of the country for hundreds of years. And I agree with what the uh, lady said, that they, they work. They give uh, parents a choice in terms of a moral and ethical code which uh, children adhere to during the course of their education and that's why they work and so the issue that um, they are divisive and they cause issues etc simply isn't made out at all. Well, uh, can I ask why is there a moral code in faith schools but not in secular schools? Surely you get a, a, an equal moral code in a secular school, it just doesn't happen to have religious foundations. Uh, the particular religion, whether it's Christianity, Hinduism, uh, Islam, uh, Sikhism has a particular type of code particular to that religion and those children who want to go to that school will follow that particular code so it's very specific to that faith and that's why it works and parents make that choice pupils make that choice 
uh, and uh, that is a fundamental part of our society. All right, Rafiq, thank you very much for your contribution this morning. That's Rafiq Patel from the Association of Muslim Schools. I could feel you itching to get in when you were hearing. Well, I think he was trying to make the point, and I half <laughs> agree with him, that he, I think he was trying to make the point that um, the faith schools work because of the faith. And I think exactly the opposite. Mm. I think the faith schools work because historically they seem to have embraced the right... Right, well, the, and the Church of England set up a lot of the schools in the first place in the 1800s. Why then, Toby, are we saying that faith schools appear to have a better academic record if, if in fact, that appears? appears to be the case. Well, one of the fundamentals right. of all good schools is a shared ethos, a vision that everyone in the school shares from the top to the bottom, staff, parents, pupils, all share the same vision, all singing from the same hymn sheet, whether it's a faith school or a secular school. And the good, the, why faith schools uh, typically are very good is because they are bound together by this shared ethos. Now, secular schools can have a shared ethos too, mm -hmm. but that's what but makes faith schools. Okay, let's just, I mean, that's, yeah, that's just totally untrue. I mean, there's absolutely no data or evidence from anywhere that suggests that that's the case. There's no evidence at all that suggests that faith schools are successful because of their ethos. None at all. There is strong evidence that select that shows that they're successful because of the socio-economically um, higher status people that they attract. And in fact, even if it works, true. Right, I know well, it is. Of, mm -hmm. of faith schools, which are incredibly But I'm talking poor about communities. research that has analysed every and single, they every single well. faith they, school in the country, not anecdotes about individual schools. Most of the church schools. schools were established in the poor areas. They take a wider not variety. Not poor now, though. Yeah, but they still take from a wider, a wider area that comes into that. So they might not be from the same social economic place as the place where the school true. is. That's that's no, and just I want to get back to Anne's point. point. If she's saying that, you know, that faith schools do have something, then I think it's crazy to say they have something, but that thing isn't the faith. If it isn't the faith, then what else could it be? You know, there is something think, that these Andrew, schools, you, that these schools do have. And um, the way, if we look at the faith of, you know, I think all the world religions would say, dignity of the human being. I'm not saying that other people don't right. agree with let, that. Let Andrew briefly they, answer yeah. that. Thank you, Murray. Well, I mean, I can only, you can only uh, <coughs> refer again to the ample evidence that exists from analysis of every single state secondary school in England, which demonstrated that the uh, apparent academic success was due to socioeconomic status. If you look at um, religious schools on value added, the way, the extent to which they bring a child up, having you know gone in from the first year, to how much value they've added to their education by the end, it's okay. not a better uh, system than other other but other. But those schools. statistics right. are and debatable. Actually. Okay, well then we'll have to leave on debatable statistics. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Aubrey. It always ends like that, really, doesn't it? I question your statistics, and I question <laughs> yeah. yours. Um, now you have been voting in.